Good afternoon. It is, uh, well, it's 224. And it's 224 on 410. Now, if you know anything about me and what I, what I do here, I take the Strong's Concordance, and I use those numbers to give wisdom and understanding. And God uses those numbers to give me wisdom and understanding. So, 224, what is that? That's 24 twice. That's two 24s. So let's look at what that says. Well, let's look at this one first. Anaglitos. And it means unreprovable, unaccused, blameless. And that is the Greek 410. So when Jesus was dying on the cross at the ninth hour, he was dying there blameless. He was an innocent man who had no sin, but he took on the sin of the entire world so that we could have salvation through his blood to the Father and have access to God. Um, access to God meant being able to go through the Holy of Holies, that curtain that stood between men and God that only one person could go through, the high priest. Uh, Jesus is our high priest, and he died at the ninth hour to provide us access. And when he died, the curtain that had multiple layers tore from the top down, 30 feet from the top down, I believe 30 feet. And, and the earth quaked, and he gave up the ghost in the ninth hour. So he did that. He was blameless. Today, April 10th, it's 410. It's the day of blamelessness, and it's Good Friday. I find that interesting that all that lines up. This is a clock. This is the appropriate clock. You borrow a pointer here. That's a letter opener my father got in Korea. Uh, no, Japan. Um, he, was, he served in Korea, but he was in Japan when he got it. So we have a couple of clocks here. And right here at what we would call 6 o'clock in the morning, we have the hour demarcations. And i got to look at it from this side. Uh, <clears throat> so... At 6 in the morning, it's actually the first hour, second hour, third hour. The ninth hour is between 2 and 3 p.m. on this type of clock. So that's when Jesus died, somewhere between 2 and 3 p.m. in the ninth hour. The twelfth hour is between 5 and 6. The twenty-fourth hour is between 5 and 6 a.m. 2 in the afternoon, 6 p.m., Midnight, 6 a.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m., midnight, 3 a.m., between 4 and 5 is the 24th hour. 24th hour is midnight. When it says the bridegroom comes at midnight, the term they use for midnight means midnight. But that's not what the clock says. That's not what the Jews were practicing. When Jesus died... That was the clock. The ninth hour was sometime between two and three. Right now, it's the ninth hour. It's sometime between two and three. On 410, the day of blamelessness. I think you see where I'm going. Matthew 20 is a story of the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that has as a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers in his vineyard. Early in the morning he went out. This, this validates this clock right now. He went out about the third hour and saw others standing. Oh, and when he agreed with the laborers, he went out early. So that's probably the first hour. And when he agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them to his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing. He said, go to them, go to the vineyard. And he went out about the sixth hour. And the ninth hour he did likewise. And about the eleventh hour... He went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, Why stand ye here all day idle? Which means the day, all day, that was 11 hours from 6 in the morning till 5 in the afternoon. And they'd been there all day. The night hasn't even come yet. And he said unto them, Because no man has hired us. And he said, Go and you go to the vineyard and you know do whatever is right and ye shall receive. So Jesus doesn't care when you come to work in the vineyard when you come to jesus he doesn't care he doesn't care if you've been with him since the very beginning if you've been a jew amongst jews and you've been doing everything that you're supposed to do and and you know what and then you realize wow wait a second i've been taught wrong 
the rabbis are doing something wrong. And at the very last second, before you give up your last breath, you say, Lord Jesus, I, I can't believe I didn't realize. And I, I want to change. That's coming in at the 11th hour. He doesn't care. You get the same payment as anybody else. The sad part about this story is that when the uh, when they got paid, they got paid, the, the last to show up got paid before the first. And so the first that showed up, this would be the Jewish people who've been, you know, following God and working with God to the best of their ability their whole lives or their whole um, time as a chosen people. Uh, they looked and said, well, what are these getting the same wage that we're getting? We've been doing this for years. We've been doing this all day. We should get more. That's only fair. And the master of the, of the, of the vineyard says, hey, what is it to you that I pay them what I pay them? You agreed. You worked for this wage. You've received your wage. Go on. What is it to you that I do whatever I want with my money? God's kingdom is God's to rule over, and he will choose who he chooses, and he will pay what he pays, but he has already said in his word, and God is not a liar, that it doesn't matter whether you come to work with five minutes left in the day, you're still going to get paid the same wage. And who is it to anyone else to say, well, wait, 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 they, they are getting access to heaven, and they've barely been around. That's how loving God is. He just wants you to come. He wants you to come. He loves you. He absolutely loves you. And those who are true Christians love you, and they're not going to bemoan the fact that you got in on the, on the very last day. <laughs> because we all got in on the very last day. Not one of us should be going into heaven. None are righteous. No, not one. And anybody that thinks that they've got something on you because they've been preaching longer or they've been doing this longer or, you know, they need to talk to Jesus in a big way and get their pride set straight. Because that's not how this works. He wants everybody. So, I hope you find wisdom in this. What else did I want to talk about? Uh, de -de 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 oh, yeah, I got a website. Because I've been doing this a while. I got a website, and I wasn't able to publish this website until recently. This is Aniginosko. Aniginosko is the 314th word in the Greek uh, 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 Strong's Concordance, and it means to know accurately. And Isaiah 5.13, which is right about right about here. I'm going to use my little pointer. And you know, Jesus says, Don't think that I came to bring peace. I came with a sword to separate. To separate husbands. and not, It doesn't say husbands and wives, but it does say to separate a, a father-in-law and a daughter-in-law. People are going to be separated over the gospel of Christ. There are people that, that choose Christ are immediately going to have people that are like, whoa, I can't hang with you anymore. And probably just as well, because Jesus says we shouldn't hang with them. But that's the bottom line. He's going to separate. He comes with a sword. That's Matthew 10, 7 or 7, 10. So here we go. Onigonosco.org, uh, 314. There it says, Isaiah 5, 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Knowledge is what you need, and knowledge is found in the Bible. No other book is going to contain that knowledge. And any book that talks about the Bible goes through the filter of that author. Go straight to the book. Go straight to the Word. It's there. It's available to you. Use the Strong's Concordance to find out the definition of the Word, how it was used, when it was used, how often it was used, and understand that God can speak to you through His Word. Down here, about halfway down, we've got Anaginosco for iPhone users. If you're on an iPhone, tap on that one. The whole site comes up all with iPhone compliant uh, video format. If you click on the dark world, the world in darkness, your video is gonna pop up. That's what happens. I'm gonna say something here from the video. Oh, my headphones are plugged in. Well, good evening, my name is Andrew with Deuces. Okay, so video plays. That's what we want. That's all we want. That's all it's going to be is videos. Video upon video upon video. And that's what you'll find here. This is called the China Code. This one right in the center first. This is to the Chinese people because God has, uh, he, he wants the Chinese people to repent and to come near to him. Why do you think this coronavirus started in China? It's all about the Chinese. They're the first ones that are going to get this message. Corona, the sun. Okay, the corona, it's designed to look like a sun. God allowed this thing to exist, and he's using it. Man built it. I mean, it came from a lab, no doubt about it. 
and man built it, but God allows it because he's using it to tell you, look, I'm here, I'm real, I'm alive, and I want you. This is God speaking. I'm just saying what he's saying. This is this is my interpretation of what I believe he's saying. And, and, it, and it bears it out in Isaiah 49 because it says, these will come from afar, from the land of Sinim, the land of Chin, the land of China. So we've got next to it, there's the five-star Sino-Jonah, like the sign of Jonah, except it's Sino because it's for the Chinese. He wants the Chinese people, and uh, he's going to get them because it's written. It is all written in that word. So let's click on another one. Um, let's do the angel taking the church. There we go. Okay, Daddy. A little video. That's the first thing that started this whole thing. My daughter handed me a picture. Oh, do I have it? No, I don't. Uh, she handed me a picture, and it was of the angel taking the church to heaven. That blew me away. So that started this ministry, and I've been through all kinds of stuff about it. But that's all you're going to find here. Don't be afraid to click on these. There's no downloads. There's nothing here that's going to uh, do anything vicious to your computer. Uh, the very last one is the Copyright Act. It leads you over to um, copyright.gov, and that tells you what I can and can't use as far as other people's work. Uh, my privacy policy just pops up. Another video telling you this is my privacy policy. I do not use cookies. I won't use cookies. I'm, I'm just trying to stay clear of the FTC and their regulations. And just by not taking cookies, I'm good on that law. And endorsing this work. This, you know, <laughs> this is interesting. Um, because really, I don't think we're going to be here long enough for me to spend anything you might send me. But you know what? It, 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 I'll explain it. So I... When my daughter was young, I wrote these books. These are three books. Um, I think, I guess you can see them. Henry Hubert Hankey, Ichthyus Jordan, Camellia Humph. They're on Amazon. You can support that way. You can also support by going to PayPal and just donating to Cold Water for Christ. Why I chose Cold Water for Christ, I really don't know. I, I just remember hearing uh, in my spirit that, that God had a verse in his, in his scripture that said, if anyone gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, they will not lose their reward. So there is a reward for giving. Now, again, giving is tiny little bits, nothing, nothing, no big donations. You can't buy your way into heaven. You can't buy a reward off of Jesus. The reward comes the same as the pay for the day's wages. You get what you get, and everybody gets the same. Everybody gives the same. So that's how you can help. Uh, because at some point I will have to go back to work unless the rapture happens, and I believe the rapture's coming. Because that's what that first drawing was about. The angel taking the church to heaven, and there's more and more and more. When the angels come, space scrolls. She drew a bunch of pictures of space and rolled them up as scrolls. Why? Why would a kid do that? That correlates to a couple different uh, verses that I know she didn't read, because she was a tiny little girl. Teaching big people... Uh, because when she was little, she says, we're going to teach some to the big people. I'm like, well, really? And you know what? She has. She taught this big people. Our God used her to teach me, that's for sure. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. Black hole rapture mechanics, very, very way down at the bottom, describes how a black hole opening up close to our solar system could impact the world, the Earth, by uh, its gravitational force, creating a, a, a positive spin. That's not that kind of positive spin, but by increasing the rotation of the earth and what kind of impact that would have on the coastlands and the islands, because Isaiah 49 says he preaches to the coastlands and the islands. Oh, woe to you inhabitants. And uh, if the uh, if the uh, world starts spinning faster, it's going to have an impact on those lands. So th these are just things that I found out. Uh, wake up call, because he does wake me up in the middle of the morning with stuff. But these are all videos, and just click on one and watch it, and then you decide whether or not it's of God. I'm pretty sure it is. I know that my daughter wasn't reading the Bible when she drew these pictures. Um, and lastly, this Eisenhower dollar. So there's the Susan B. Anthony. This is Susan B. Anthony dollar right here. The Eisenhower is over here. The Eisenhower is this guy. And this video is already up. But Obadiah 1.4 says, because they make their nest amongst the stars. That's an eagle bearing a branch. It's nest building. It's amongst the stars. Uh, that he will, though thou exalt thyself as an eagle, he will drag them down. Okay? Not only is it on this coin, it's also on the back of the Susan B. Anthony dollar. 
There it is on the back of the Susan B. Anthony, the eagle bearing a branch, nest building amongst the stars. Though, the, though you exalt yourself as an eagle and make your nest amongst the stars, from thence I will bring you down. God is saying, look, you know, you can say all this stuff about yourself, but I will bring you down. How he brings the United States down, I don't know. Could be coronavirus. This could be just the beginning of a number of things that have to happen. But I would not, I would not anticipate, you know, God coming and, and rescuing America when his word says that he's going to take us down. We've minted hundreds of millions maybe even the 2,000 million, what is that, 2 billion? Over the course of the years, these coins have been minted. Uh, they have, of this particular coin, there's a, a surplus of 500 million Susan B. Anthony dollars. How many different times do we have to stamp it into metal that we are the eagle bearing of nest building amongst the stars? That's a, that's a dangerous claim against the word of God. So um, the, uh, elsewhere in Obadiah, I think it's uh, 7, verse 7, it says that men who have eaten bread amongst you have betrayed you. And it's interesting that when Jesus um, went and had dinner and Judas stood up and he said, you know, they, they asked him, well, who, who, is it me? Is it me? Have I betrayed you? And uh, he goes, no, the one who dips his bread in, in, the, in the wine with me, he's the one. And, of course, Jesus dipped his bread. So Jesus shared bread with Judas just before his betrayal. He was essentially quoting from Obadiah, that the one who shares bread with you has, has uh, led you astray. Um, there's a lot of things missing. In fact, all it takes is one thing missing from the Word of God. And, um, you know, I wish I had that up here, but I'll, I'll probably do that in another one. Um, Moses said to the people, he said, listen, listen, as I tell you what God commands of you. And then he goes into the Ten Commandments and he starts saying, so what's the first commandment? The first commandment is to listen. Because if you don't listen, you're going to miss all the other ten. You're going to miss the point. Things have been removed. Things have been forgotten. And the Jews have not been able to Oh, give a sacrifice at an appropriate temple ever since the temple was destroyed, which is why they're trying to build another one so they can continue the sacrifice. Uh, that'll happen. Uh, it'll happen, but it'll happen to their dismay because three and a half years into that, uh, the Antichrist is going to come, and, and then he will be no friend of any anyone. Uh, it will be bad. Uh, Jesus said that uh, unless those days... Well, that, that may be something else, but... The point being is that um, you got to be on the right side of God. You got to be on the right side of God, and the only way to do that is to go through His Son. And like I, like I've said in other videos, that'd be incredibly. It is incredibly exclusive and exclusionary. But I didn't make the rule. The one who made the rule stands in heaven, sits in heaven, and watches over the entire earth and has command over every last detail. The coronavirus, a sun-shaped virus to mock the sun worshipers of Egypt, the people who have let Egyptian idols proliferate throughout the world, obelisks and other things of Egypt, uh, pyramids on the back of dollar bills. That In Ezekiel 20, verse 8, he says, I will cast my fury upon them because they did not give up their idols of Egypt. I don't even think this is the fury yet, but we've got some problems. So um, it is Good Friday. Thank you, Lord, that you sacrificed your life for me, for everyone on Good Friday. Thank you that you were blameless and able to atone for my sins and no further atonement is needed. I think that's all I got to say. God bless. Take care. Make sure you get on the right side with the Lord quietly anywhere. My father did his in a wheelchair seven days before he passed away. And uh, and apparently he needed to do it because he was wondering why he was living so long. He said, why is this taking so long? So maybe you need to get it right with God. And he did from his wheelchair right there. Just a few words, but he did it. And seven days later he passed away. He got exactly what he wanted. Apparently that was what was missing because as soon as he accomplished it, he started his trip to heaven, and seven days later, he was there. Please get right with God. That's what this is all about. There is only one way. Jesus is that way. I didn't make the rules. I'm just letting you know they exist. 
And God is letting you know they exist because he's making himself known through coronaviruses, through the, the abolishing of, of money, that money is going to be worthless at some point. The stock market's crashing. People can't go to work. They can't, you know, it, it's, he's mocking the gods of Egypt and the exodus will be next because that's the way it was in the beginning. So shall it be in the end. He's the alpha and the omega. The beginning and the end are the same. It's Jesus, Jesus, and Jesus. So expect the beginning to look like the end, or expect the end to look like the beginning. Plagues, mockery of false gods, exodus of people. Um, I think that's all. God bless. Happy Passover, and uh, Resurrection Sunday is coming quickly. Take care.